Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective in our eGPU series. This is going to be episode number two, and today we're going to do things completely differently and hopefully achieve the same result. So we will be doing a couple of things. The first thing is we are going to be using the eGPU system as seen in episode one right there under Windows 7. We are going to be doing it with a different power supply and a different GPU. So, without further ado, let us meet our contestants. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is our power supply. So this is a very simple, low-cost power supply I pulled out of an office computer. And I'm really curious to know if this will do the job. Now, if we take a look at our cable snake, we do have the motherboard uh, cable there that will do the trick. We have our CPU cable there, so we're good to go on that. Now the only thing that we need to worry about is powering the GPU. Now this is pretty old, it's got some Molex, it's got some SATA power, uh, but you'll notice that it does not have any uh, PCIe. Like it's even got a power port for a three and a half inch floppy drive, like come on. So here's how we're going to get around that. Way back in the day when everybody was buying graphics cards and didn't have the power supplies to run them, they came with these. And I happen to have a lot of these lying around. What it is, is it takes two Molex and it makes a PCIe 6 port. These are pretty easy to find for cheap if you have to buy it brand new. I think they're about 10 Canadian dollars, but I'm sure if you know a person or know a shop, they've got hundreds of these lying in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and stuff that onto the ends of these two Molex connectors, and we should have the required power for our GPU. Let's go ahead and plug this in, and then we'll go ahead and hook it up to everything else. Okay, so let's grab our eGPU here. We'll go ahead and put that down. We'll take our power, we'll plug in the motherboard connector, and then we'll plug in the CPU connector and then we'll go ahead and plug this fellow into the eGPU like that. Now our graphics card for today is going to be this MSI 950. Now we might do a 10 series card in the future but the challenges with that is it'll only really work on the Express card. The M2 and PCIe methods tend not to work according to what I'm reading on the internet. We'll go ahead and drop this on the dock and then we're going to go ahead and take our power from our old power supply and stuff it onto the top of our eGPU. The last cable that of course that we need to connect is the express card cable and just as I warned in the other video, do not plug this end into a real HDMI port Bad, very bad, do not do that. We are all plugged in, so let's go ahead and stick the express card into the X220, boot into Windows, and see what happens. Let's go ahead and flip on the, the power for our power supply there, and we'll go ahead and start the computer. Our eGPU has gotten power, this is a good thing. We're gonna interrupt normal startup because we want this to boot to Windows, not to Linux, which is the default operating system for this computer. Okay, looks like a device has been detected. And it's asking me to restart later. I'm going to ignore that for the moment. So it looks like it has detected the GPU. So let's just try and install the graphics drivers and not worry about GeForce experience. Okay, now that it has, has all right, now that it has installed the drivers, let's go ahead and restart and hopefully it'll correctly detect the GPU. Okay, as we can see up here, it has successfully detected the GTX 950. Now the question is, uh, what other sort of performance we can get out of it? So currently, uh, we do not have anything on the monitor out of frame. So we're going to have to see if we can use any sort of control panel options to uh, get that panel to be recognized. 
Thankfully, it was just a matter of right-clicking on the desktop, going into screen resolution or display settings, and it looks like I should be able to extend uh, this display. So if we go ahead and hit apply, we have ourselves uh, two displays functioning the way that we would expect. I'll just adjust the camera here for you. And as you can see there, we do have two displays operating, which is awesome. So now that we've got that working, let's do some benchmarking. Okay, for this first test, we are going to use the native display here. And just like before, because we're crazy, we're gonna crank it all the way up to ultimate and see what happens. So that means that all of these settings will be set, including the hair tress FX, just to see what'll happen. I know that the 950 card actually supports it, so here we go. All right, so far this looks pretty promising. So we'll go ahead and uh, start the benchmark here and see how it goes. It's worth pointing that this is gonna load a lot slower than the other one. It's running off of like a mechanical hard drive, not a solid state. So, here we go. So the hair effects look pretty good. All right, that's not too bad actually. So we're all the way up to about 40 frames per second. So that's anywhere from 10 to 15 frames per second better than the GTX 770. And I couldn't turn on certain settings because that card didn't support it. Uh, it showed a minimum of 30, uh, but a maximum of 48.6. So that's actually quite good. Uh, you'd be able to easily play Tomb Raider and anything older on this particular setup uh, with significant ease. So let's go ahead and do the other benchmark using the connected 1080p display and see how much that drops. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set this to the uh, second display and we're going to crank that resolution up to uh, 920 by 1080. We'll leave everything else uh, the same and we'll go ahead and press play.
Okay, so these numbers are pretty much more or less what we would expect. Although an average of 34.3 frames per second is not too terribly bad. Uh, our minimum is 29.1 and our max is 41.4. So even at a higher resolution, probably due to the newer GPU, that doesn't really seem to have as big of an impact in terms of uh, resolution being displayed. I really do have to point out though that one of the weak points is going to be the CPU. That is also part of the benchmark, we can't ignore that. Um, but a 950 seems to be uh, a pretty decent pairing in terms of what it's capable of doing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for some real quick conclusions for episode two. Honestly, I thought that Linux was going to be the hard, difficult operating system, but it turns out that both of them are actually pretty equal, at least from Windows 7's point of view. I would imagine that the process is actually quite similar from Windows 10. This particular machine just doesn't happen to be running it on that hard drive. That being said, if it's running in an older operating system, I would say your chances of success are all that much higher. That being said, I will certainly test and continue to work with the eGPU if I get the opportunity to uh, get some other ThinkPads that have the Express Card slot. Uh, you might even be able to convince me in the comments down below to hook up a 10 series graphics card. With the 7 series graphics card, it was an experiment. I wasn't too sure how well this was going to go. If anything was going to get fried, an older card is pretty safe. Uh, now I've tried a 950 that I have in a secondary machine here, and that actually worked pretty well. I'm My confidence is building, so if you would like to see uh, a, a graphics card stuffed in here that really has no business running on an X220, let me know in the comments section down below, and that might make it into episode 3. If you do have any questions, also feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you are going to be requesting specific games and benchmarks, please understand that I am limited to the games that I actually have in my library. Um, and don't necessarily want to use channel funds for purchasing games just for the explicit purpose of benchmarking. Anyway, if you enjoy this sort of content, I'm going to leave the big four here at the bottom. Please like the video, share it subscribe and hit that notification bell so when episode three comes out you are the first to know about it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time